back to broadcasting the solutions to homework 5.1p. I'm going to go down here and finish up C. Okay. So for C it says, if the cylinder develops a pinhole size leak and some of the gas escapes, what um, would the mole ratio? Okay, we uh, calculated the mole ratio in the last problem um, for each, actually, whether it's N2 or O2. Uh, we'll use N2 as a case study. It was 0.875 divided by 1.750, which ended up being 0 0.50. Okay. Would the mole ratio in the cylinder increase, decrease, or remain the same? So if you think about this cylinder as having an equal number of each mole. Okay. Let's call this N2 and this O2. Okay. <clears throat> Would in the cylinder would it increase, decrease, or remain the same? So, if it develops a pinhole size leak, so let's say there's a little leak right there, what's going to happen is the N2 gas and the O2 gas is going to want to leave the hole. If gases expand to fill their container, um, that's basically what's going to happen. So this process of gases leaving a hole. This is called effusion, and we're going to talk about this in class a little bit more. Okay, So what we're looking at here is we're looking at 4A. And in 4A, we know it says that the lighter is faster and the heavier is slower. Okay, So let's recall that the molar mass of nitrogen is 24 grams per mole and that of a, so let's say this is oxygen sorry of oxygen is 32 so who's going to diffuse faster and okay, so we are we know that O2 will effuse slower and N2 will effuse faster so let's think about what this means if over a period of time the O2 effuses slower out of the container, over a period of time there will be more O2 left in the container and less N2 because N2 effuses or escapes the container at a faster rate. So over time more and more N2 is going to come out relative to the O2. N2 is going to come out at a much faster rate. So what will happen to this ratio? This ratio will go down. N2 is going to go down, O2 is going to go up relative to N2 over time. So will it increase? It will decrease because N2 effuses at a faster rate due to lower molar mass. Okay, so N2 has a lower molar mass, effuses at a faster rate, thus over time the ratio of N2 to O2 will actually go down. All right, let's look at this next problem. D and E is dealing with a different container, so I'm actually going to go down here. So for D. Okay, a different rigid container that's five liters contains 1.76 moles of NO at um, 298 Kelvin. Um, 0.176 moles of O2 is added to the, to the cylinder and it produces N2. So D, write a balance equation for this reaction. Okay, they, we can pretend that we're on free response number four right here. So they outline it for you. They say that you have NO right here and O2 is added to it okay, right there and you produce NO, NO2. Okay, so let's balance it. Make the O's even on each side. That gives us four, the two here, and we're done. Okay, for E, calculate the total pressure in the cylinder. All right, now we do have different gases. We have NO and we have O2. We actually were given one point or 
seven six moles of NO um, and into this 0.176 moles of O2 were added. I actually like to outline things like this um, just so I'm labeled and I, and I relate my moles to the reaction. Okay. Calculate the total pressure. We have mixed gases, we have moles, but we actually don't have a total pressure to multiply the mole ratio by. So we're going to use the equation P total equals P um, NO plus PO2 plus PNO2 because they say after the reaction is complete so we're actually going to form some NO2 so we're going to have all these gases we're going to have this gas this gas and this gas after the reaction is complete let's do the reaction and let's see what will happen so this reaction is going to happen and for every two NOs, we need one O2. So if we have 0.176 moles of NO, we need double that, all right? So we actually, well, we need double the amount of NO than O2. So if you have 0.176 moles of NO and you got 0.176 moles of O2, you only need half of that O2, okay? So half of 0.176, let's get out this calculator here. 0.176, clear, 0 0.176 divided by 2 equals 0 0.088. So you're only going to need half of this, 0 0.088. So you're going to have Yeah. Let me double check this. Yeah. So when all of this reacts, let's think about, think about it this way. All of this NO is going to react. So you're going to use up all of this 0.176 moles of NO. And you're going to have zero moles of NO left. Which means you're not going to have any pressure due to NO. But because for every two moles of NO, you only need one mole of O2, that means the ratio of NO to O2 must always be 2 to 1. So if you use 0.176 moles of NO, you're going to only need half of that for the O2. And you have 0.176, so you're going to only need 0.88 moles, 0 0.088 moles of O2. Okay. So after the reaction is complete, you're going to have 0 0.088 moles of O2 left. And you're going to make double that of NO2. So you'll have 0.176 moles of NO2. So it came from the mole ratio, guys, if you look at it. If you have 0.176 moles of NO, okay, you're going to need only 0 0.088 moles of O2, and you're going to make 0.176 moles of NO2. 0 0.176, 0 0.088, 0 0.176 is the same thing as 2 to 1 to 2. So you started with 0.176 moles of NO, therefore you only needed 0 0.088 moles of O2, and you produced 0.176 moles of NO2 due to these balanced reactions. Okay. Now because you only needed 0 0.088 moles of O2, you had 0 0.088 left. So in terms of the total pressure left, you don't have any more NO, you used up all of that. Okay. So it's going to be pressure O2 plus pressure NO2. So we can use the old equation that we did in part A, which said that P equaled N for O2 plus N for NO2 times RT, since they have the same temperature, and they're actually in a 5-liter container. So... You're going to plug 